Hello all, Rick here, and this video is a breakdown on the computer systems of the Starfleet vessels in Star Trek, covering the basics of their look, function and capability. The Alcars Computer System is an acronym for Library Computer Access and Retrieval System, and is the primary operating platform for the computers of Starfleet and a standardised one used throughout the Federation. During the 23rd century, the computers of starships operated on duotronic systems, as conceived of by Dr. Richard Daystrom. This system replaces the prior ones, which were already the most advanced computers produced by humans, as noted by the complexity of the NX-01's main computer, which was considered one of the most advanced ever made. Duotronics were not only superior, but rather comparably compatible with the prior generations of technology, leading to an easy upgrade and conversion of existing ships throughout the 2240s, a key factor in its success. The non-canonical description of duotronic systems is a form of quantum computing that is described as the formula for the relationship between subatomic particles and data processing. We do not know what the actual operating system that ran on starships was called, but in the Kelvin timeline it was referred to as PCAP-SYS. By 2268, the duotronic systems of Starfleet vessels had seemingly reached an apex, as Daystrom had been pioneering his multitronic system for main starship computers. However, this system took numerous prototypes to establish and eventually produced an artificial intelligence known as the M5 unit, the first working model based on the human mind. Unfortunately, the machine was unstable, and the War Games incident escalated into the loss of several hundred officers and the severe damaging of the Constitution class USS Lexington and the USS Excalibur. The machine was eventually talked down and self terminated further displaying its unsuitability as a replacement for the main computer system of a Starfleet ship. The Multitronic system would not see further development, and became added to the long list of abandoned projects, unless you want to include certain mentions in books and such where it was continued. Duotronics, however, continued to function as the basis of Starship Computer Cores, although the interface technology was adapted with numerous overhauls to ship design through the turn of the century, but the efficiency and operating of the computer systems remained pretty much consistent, with bugs and errors being ironed out as they were uncovered. Eventually, however, these systems would reach a zenith, and a new alternative was devised. Instead, Starfleet opted to develop new technology, one that was a complete departure from duotronic methods isolinear systems, supported by an optical data network system throughout a vessel. These new computer cores were faster, and could interpret verbal commands with ease based on desired and predicted extrapolations. You can see the level of advancement on display every time a person asks the holodeck for something, and the computer generates it without fuss or specifics. Some of the earliest vessels to feature isolinear technology were the Excelsior classes towards the end of the century but duotronic systems would not be completely decommissioned until 2320. I have already covered the nature of isolinear chips in depth, but suffice to say the amount of information stored in an isolinear form far exceeds that of the capabilities of a duotronic computer. The two systems are not directly compatible, however, but as Starfleet developed both, conversions and adapters are not hard to come by and information can be freely downloaded wirelessly from one system and uploaded to the other easily enough. Just don't expect to be able to plug an isolinear chip into the Constitution class Enterprise and expect results. With the overhaul of technology moving forwards and duotronic systems being left behind, the interface with the main computer was also updated with a new interface display known as LCARS, but not immediately as we can see on the bridges of ships such as the USS Stargazer NCC-2893 and the Enterprise-C. The older look of selected blues and greens remained, and the consoles resembled far more those of the Constitution refit era. By 2354, we have the Federation vessels such as the Raven that operated the LCARS interface systems, so we can assume it to be around this date when the change was made. I base this on the notion that the Enterprise-C was an ambassador class. Starfleet would not have neglected such a new development in a prestigious vessel had Elcars been in existence when it was commissioned. 
The Raven was likely a top-of-the-line science scout ship, newly constructed and featured the latest computer tech. The Elkar's displays were highly customizable for individual preferences and in most instances, also with proper authorization, almost any console could be reconfigured to display any other system. Considering that by the mid-24th century almost all interfaces were touchpads, a user could easily adjust them and run multiple drop-down and pop-up windows. The colours varied too and were often pastels, switching to more vibrant but darker shades with time. Among the many features of Elkars was a haptic feedback that could allow a blind person to sense and feel their control panel as well as the distinctive chirping beeps of controls responding. By the late 24th century and early 25th, holographic displays were now used in conjunction with those on a console, but even these retained the style and layout that was familiar to Starfleet crews, simply in three dimensions on a floating screen. The computer systems of Starfleet have been described as an artificial intelligence of a sort, but it seems that they are not truly aware or sentient as beings such as data would be considered. For example, the main computer displays no self-preservation instinct nor desires of its own, but it is advanced enough to respond to philosophical questions and extrapolate complex ideas within seconds. In both the Halo and Mass Effect universes, there is a distinction made between these sorts of intelligences, with true aware and sapient programs referred to as true AIs or smart AIs. While the sort of intelligence that is still restrained by programming and only simulates the affectations of life is referred to as a virtual intelligence or dumb AI. The same is true of the main computers of starships, because although they can produce complex patterns of reasoning and adapt, they can only do so based on the knowledge they have in their programming. They do not formulate ideas of their own, drawn from imagination, as it were. The information stored in the main computers of a starship was vast, with pretty much the entire Federation archive of knowledge at the crew's disposal, including the cultural works of thousands of worlds. The sheer quantity of information can still provide a challenge to sift through for the main computer, as in several instances we do see a request prompt a warning that compiling information will take time. This gives you the faintest notion of just how much data is present on a starship. In other instances, we do see the computers of 24th century starships develop sentience or attitudes, but never without outside influence, such as Q Jr. tampering with the computers of Voyager, and there was one instance of an emergent life form created on board the Enterprise D. However, once this system developed and left the ship, the main computer returned to normal. Its origin never clearly defined as external, only a uh, suspected emergent. Other operating systems and computer technologies exist in Star Trek, and Elkars is simply the one we know the most about, as it features the most. It provides a unifying look to the technology of later timeline Trek, and a good indicator of when a series is set can be established by simply looking at the computer displays. But by the far future, Elkars has been replaced by something as new as programmable matter, and now that operates the main interfaces with computer systems, and that is an entirely different look and tech. However, even by this time, there still remains laws around the integration of true AIs into a starship, such as the unique computer systems of the USS Discovery, now known by the name Zora. These laws exist for several reasons. Artificial intelligences have rights in Star Trek, and having one effectively bound to serve a crew is questionable, even if it volunteered for the role. On top of this, there is the potential unreliability that is introduced with free will in a system that needs to be reliable, so it's generally considered best to sidestep these issues altogether. Thank you for watching this video on the computers of Trek. It's one of those systems like Warp Drive that we know how it's supposed to work, and there is a great deal of depth that has gone into making it believable but looking too deep reveals the vagaries in specifications because at the end of the day it is fictional, hence terms like quads for data storage, which do not have a canon comparable. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.